Well, good afternoon or good morning to all of you who are with us today. I uh, thank you for hanging in there for your patience. We had a, a few uh, unexpected technical uh, difficulties here at this end. So thank you for hanging in there. And I would like to welcome you to the Worldwide Quest Alumni Expeditions Travel Showcase for 2023. Just to let you know, uh, we expect this presentation will run perhaps uh, 30 to 40 minutes at the most. There will be an opportunity for some questions afterwards and answers. And if you um, if you can hear me, just to, to give you a little bit of housekeeping here, if you can hear me but you can't see me, or if you can see a slide but not my face, or vice versa, if you see my face but not a slide in front of you, there should be a large slide saying Worldwide Quest Alumni Exhibitions. Um, below, my, below my face or below whatever image you see, there may be a, a gray bar with three little lines, three little closely spaced horizontal lines in it. If you click on that, the other image may drop down for you. Uh, if you um, if you have any other difficulties, you can see, but you, you can't hear or vice versa. Um, you can also close the program and just relaunch the program. There is a chat box if you have any technical difficulties in your GoToWebinar console, which you may see on the right side of your screen right now, or maybe perhaps in the center of your screen, you can enter any questions or comments, you, or any comments you have there about technical issues. And there is also in your GoToWebinar console, a questions tab, and you can type in any questions you have there and we'll do our best to answer them for you uh, towards the end of the presentation today. So today I'm very pleased to welcome you, as I said, once again, and it's possible you're, you're joining us through, through one of different means. We are calling this an Alumni Expeditions um, presentation. That's because we work with a number, we at Worldwide Quest work uh, with a number of Canadian University Alumni Associations to present travel opportunities to uh, alumni and friends uh, that, um, that allow you to connect with uh, other, other travelers in your community, from your school, and perhaps with other uh, Canadian alumni from, from across Canada and internationally, because we know there's lots of Colum uh, Canadian alumni um, living worldwide. So we'd like to thank those uh, in the alumni community who have, um, who have let you know about this presentation, University of Alberta, McMaster, Western, USASC, McGill, and York U. Uh, even if you're not affiliated with one of these schools, you are welcome, most welcome here. And also I'll be talking to you about, in fact, four travel opportunities in this presentation, which as I said, are open to all alumni and friends. So if you see what you like and you're interested, you are most welcome to, to join these trips. And we, um, we like to say, we at Worldwide Quest, through our alumni expedition branch, um, that we like to we like to offer trips that uh, are appealing to uh, Canadian alumni travelers. They allow that that um, that community building, the chance for you to meet those uh, past colleagues, perhaps or past fellow alumni. Um, but they're also trips that add tremendous value, we think, for Canadian travelers. We often feature study leaders or uh, tour leaders who are drawn from the very uh, same alumni communities that that you are a part of. So um, in this presentation today, we'll be featuring four trips that I think are very interesting to you. Uh, trips of different lengths and found in very different parts of the world. And as, of course, as we know, travel has been um, sort of re resuming, especially internationally. So we've paid special attention to what we think are the important elements that travelers like yourselves have been telling us, uh, you know, why it is, why does you travel? Um, you know, so traveling is perhaps, uh, you know, sightseeing is an important part of travel, but so is discovering deeper connections in the world. So, um, and we know that uh, health is also a, a, a going concern, especially now um, in, in the current era, as we uh, emerge from the pandemic. Um, I should let you know that Worldwide Quest has been awarded the World Travel and Tourism Council for safe travels, which means that we uh, we inspect um, all the conditions, basically, and assure all the conditions for your health uh, on our trips uh, at home and abroad. 
Um, I should give you a quick update. We have been running a number of alumni trips over the last 12 years or so, uh, geared uh, to the Canadian University Alumni Traveler, like, like yourself. Uh, our next trip, in fact, is in one month's time. We have a, a, a full ship charter for Canadian University Alumni to Antarctica. Uh, that one is, uh, is sold out. So we're really excited, though, to be doing, to be doing this uh, full circle Antarctic voyage, which visits the Falklands um, South Georgia and Antarctica. We have, uh, we are planning another one for, for 2024 at the same time of year. So you just want to watch for news from your University of, uh, University Alumni Association for this. And, um, and I, I think I failed to introduce myself um, owing to the technical difficulties here. By the way, my name is Justin Peter and I am one of the principals at Worldwide Quest and I'm pleased to be your host today. So today we are discussing and presenting four different uh, travel opportunities in very different parts of the world and you can see them plotted with little uh, wine colored pins, pins here. Uh, trips that are both closer to home, perhaps to a part of Canada that you have not been to yet, uh, and other places which are more or less uh, familiar to you. And um, the first place I want to talk about is the Magdalen Islands. Now, how many of you have uh, heard about the Magdalens? I'm sure many of you have heard of these islands. But where exactly they're located is uh, not necessarily obvious because they are uh, they constitute constitute a tiny archipelago in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And on this uh, short trip that we have planned for you. Uh, it's an opportunity to get to this remote place and spend, basically have an immersion experience in one location where you can get to um, get to a, a, a place where you can enjoy the surroundings, spend long enough that you get an immersion experience and feel that you're sort of disconnected from, um, you know, from your daily lives for sure, because the pace of life on the Magdalene Islands is very different. And just to show you where the Magdalens are and perhaps why they are difficult to find sometimes on the map, this is a zoomed in look at the southern Gulf of St. Lawrence. And you can see St. Lawrence, or rather a Prince Edward Island at the bottom of your screen here. And just northeast of them are the Magdalen Islands. It looks sort of like one island, but it's about 15 major islands that are more or less, almost all of them are connected to each other by, by, by sand, by sandbars really and now by a road, uh, except for one of the main uh, islands. And they are, uh, it's possible to get there by ferry or by plane. Uh, there are flights coming in from Montreal. And we're proposing a short, essentially week long stay on the Magdalen Islands. And the Magdalens being not so far from Prince Edward Island, many of you have been to Prince Edward Island, uh, you know, they have red sandstone underlying them. These yeah. scenes may look quite familiar to you if you've been to PEI before. Uh, they're beautiful in much the same way as PEI with the, with the seascapes, the cliffs and the beautiful sandy beaches, but they're different also in, in many other ways. Um, they're, they're much smaller than Prince Edward Island. <laughs> And part of the islands, of course, they're rimmed with beaches and they're beautiful. They also have forests that are, are stunted. Um, I happened to actually spend my honeymoon in on the Magdalene Islands about just over a year ago or so. And I was amazed to see the forests that are covering the islands are, you know, sometimes they're just six feet tall. They're the same types of trees you might have on the mainland, but they're stunted, they're small. And those islands are really burying the forest, especially in the winter. Of, of winds coming out of the, the Gulf of St. Lawrence. So it's, it's a very different feel when you get there. Um, culturally as well, the Magdalene Islands are, are interesting. Uh, the Magdalene Islands belong to Quebec, technically, but, and of course they do have a, a large French speaking population, but the, the culture, the French speak, speaking culture doesn't come from the St. Lawrence Valley, the core of, of um, French Canadian culture. It really comes from Acadia. So it's, it's a, a distinctive, a distinctive French speaking culture. There's also a sizable English speaking minority on the islands as well, which has been there for a very long time. So you have two English speaking and French speaking cultures on a very small uh, land base. There's under 15,000 residents here on the Magdalens. So it's a very small area. It's almost a slight, you know, like a microcosm of uh, Canadian bilingualism in one place and you have these wonderful landscapes uh, to boot as well. And a wonderful place to explore. Uh, beachcombing is, is something you can do. 
um, amply, but it's a place with an interesting culture. So you get immersed in uh, the local flavor. On our tour, we have a chance to take walks along the beaches in those forests, do little boat rides to, um, for example, one of the islands not connected to the mainland. And we have a chance to do something such as uh, clam digging, where we can dig clams in uh, mud flats and, and actually um, feast on them later. The fun part of this trip is that we're staying at one lodge for the entire time. The islands being fairly small don't really necessitate driving and going from one place to another, from one hotel to another. We stay in one place for the entire length of our stay. Uh, this is where I stayed for my honeymoon, the Auberge La Salicorne. And it's a beautiful location, um, sort of towards one more remote part of the archipelago. And we'll have uh, a daily trips um, planned from here. We can do some walks from here as well. We will have our own chartered minibus that will take us to our different excursions uh, on the islands. Some of them more structured outings like clam digging and some of them a little bit more unstructured like beach walks. So if you've heard of the Magdalens and you want a chance to discover them, I think they're, they're beautiful and I certainly felt uh, invigorated for my one week there. Beautiful landscapes. And did I mention the food? Uh, we dine very well at our inn, Auberge de la They have what I would call fusion, um, fusion chic <laughs> local cuisine, a wonderful use of local ingredients. Um, there's some Asian fusion and, and other uh, themes that come, a uh, different theme every night. And I can't say I have, I have not eaten better uh, in, in quite a while. So it's a wonderful place to discover with the local ingredients. So it's a place that just to sum it up is offering you the beautiful seaside, the chance to walk on beaches, great gourmet cuisine, uh, photography, both in terms of landscapes and um, wildflowers, bird life as well. It's remote. You have the Acadian culture from the East Coast French speaking um, community. And it's it's remote, yet it's part, it, it's right here in Canada. So I don't think you can feel uh, more far away from 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 uh, daily life within the southern half of Canada than here on the Magdalens. So that's the first trip I wanted to talk about for you. And uh, as I said, uh, a wonderful place to be. The next trip I want to talk to you about is the Galapagos Island. I know many of you have been to the Galapagos perhaps in the past, um, and you've probably, I, I would suspect, have enjoyed it immensely. Uh, the Galapagos are what we might call a, a bucket list destination for many, for, for many good reasons. Um, we are proposing this uh, essentially 11 day trip to the Galapagos, including um, a week aboard a small privately chartered vessel, exclusively chartered for, for you in February of 2023. I'm going to get more, get back um, to the dates uh, towards the end of this little section here, but I'll tell you that we, uh, we have these dates initially planned, February 6th to 16th, 23. And the Galapagos, if you, if you've, you may have heard is a fantastic place, really otherworldly, because it is like nowhere else on earth. Um, the wildlife there is what we might describe as you know, weird and wonderful, um, such as this uh, land iguana here, and is remarkably approachable owing to you know, millions of years of, of evolution free of um, disturbance from humans. Uh, wildlife has, most of the wildlife <laughs> has no real apparent fear of humans, so you can approach them to a certain distance and just be amazed by um, their beauty, their form. And the, the place itself, the, the habitats are just really different as well. You have cacti, a giant cacti like this one here, a giant cactus and a puntia, a prickly pear that, that's huge, basically it's forming a, it's like a tree-sized cactus. And it's, it's an eclectic, it's an eclectic place in many respects, the landscapes and the wildlife. Um, the, the Galapagos are islands, of course, it's an archipelago. Uh, many of the larger islands are, they're larger and smaller islands, but they're close enough that you can visit a number of different islands on one itinerary, but to do so, you really need to go in a vessel. So we charter this vessel, it's a, an eight cabin vessel, which we call the Beluga. We've worked with it for uh, many years, and we visit a number of islands over our time there. 
and this is sort of this is a sample route. Uh, this is the fact that we will be planning to take next February, and it's an opportunity to get to know different sides of the Galapagos. The islands themselves share many things in common. However, they're different enough in respect, in many respects, the age of the island. The, the island may be different one from the other, sometimes markedly. That affects the type of vegetation that's growing on them and then uh, consequently the, uh, the wildlife you'll find there. So we'll have different landscapes and different wildlife and this itinerary is really kind of a, a sampler that lets you um, see those different places. So we cruise on our small vessel, which is the smallest vessel class possible, and we make regular landings at fixed locations and, and then we go exploring. And the landings are all different, as I said. In one place, you might be visiting a bird colony. You might be seeing, for example, the blue-footed booby here. I liked, I love this one. I, I took this photograph myself. It seemed to be looking at its feet. 50% of the world's population of the blue-footed booby breeds in the Galapagos Islands. So you have a great chance of seeing them. Amazing photography opportunities. So one day you might go to through a bird colony where you have various um, seabirds up close and many other things. Um, you know, some of the islands are, are younger, have more recent evidence of volcanic activity, such as um, lava fields, which we may visit, um, gentle walks always. And other places will have other wildlife. Um, for example, the giant tortoises found on a number of different islands, but not readily uh, visible or, or observable on, on all of them. So we go to the choice location to see these creatures up close and um, you see they're, they're fairly approachable. We do have to keep a certain minimum distance from them, but you get that sense of variety when you visit the different islands on, on an expedition cruise like this. And there's various experiences. Of course, there's walks. You'll have the chance to do photography. I think the top rated um, underdog experience, if you will, is snorkeling. And I think probably from, from the comments we've had from past travelers, many did not expect to find snorkeling so enjoyable but seeing as we're, we're uh, cruising on the ocean, we have time in the middle of the day usually that doesn't interfere with our landings where we can try snorkeling. And I can tell you it's, it's an amazing experience. Even if you've never done it before, we provide all equipment and uh, tutelage on board. Everyone seems to enjoy it. And uh, this is just a, a snapshot of the type of uh, underwater life you'll see, marine life. I can tell you it can be quite dazzling. Um, but it's a whole new world uh, underwater in the Galapagos. So uh, it was an excellent value added experience. And the fun part is that we're on the smallest vessel class and we're an all Canadian traveler ship. So there might be you know, 12, 14 or 16 of us on there coming from different parts of, of Canada. So we, we have, um, being a small group, we can do our landings very efficiently, I think and we have enough time together to to get to know each other and our vessel is uh one we've we've worked with as i said for a number of years when we like it's a it's a nice intimate space with um, nice indoor and outdoor um, facilities and um it's a great place to, to actually just enjoy being there because before and after landings in the early morning you can get up before we do landing have your cup of coffee on the back deck and enjoy the 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 new site we're in because every day we're sailing um, from one to another in the morning you'll wake up in a, a totally different landscape so it's an, an enjoyable small group experience and uh, we we also include in addition to all the uh, the other things uh, a nice city tour in Quito the capital of mainland Ecuador and that's where we meet uh, initially and uh, we have a tour there and get a chance to meet everyone there so it's a great great trip small vessel amazing wildlife um, even if you don't think you're, even if you think you're quite a bad photographer, uh, you will take good photographs um, because the wildlife is so approachable. You get the opportunity to snorkel. We have a lot of time uh, out in the field, and just the landscapes themselves, the geology is fascinating. So, of course, there's this association with Charles Darwin and evolution. You've probably heard of that uh, connection, and so we're we're getting to see some of the things that inspired Charles Darwin himself uh, back in the uh, first half of the 19th century. I should mention that our February excursion is led by television personality and biologist Dan Riskin, also an author and lately the science correspondent on CTV News. Um, Dan will be bringing uh, 
whole new insights to uh, evolution and uh, biology uh, ownership. We will also have a Galapagos National Park guide with us the entire time as well. So we have a great uh, opportunity to learn in addition to seeing and visiting the landscape, seeing the wildlife. Um, I should mention, however, <laughs> that the February departure, February 6th to 16th, is uh, we have one cabin remaining on this. It has been very popular already with alumni travelers, so we have limited availability on that one. However, we have just opened up an October departure, October 16th to the 26th, 2023, and uh, it is with a fine, fine leader. Uh, Patrick Muldowen is currently just finishing up his doctoral studies at the University of Toronto. He is a graduate of the University of Guelph. And Patrick is uh, interested, you can see he has a Charles Darwin t-shirt on, on him, interested in evolution and biogeography, which is the understanding the evolution of wildlife as it pertains to, to geography, so biogeography. Uh, and he's particularly interested in reptiles and amphibians. Uh, there are those giant tortoises and uh, land and marine iguanas in the Galapagos. He's particularly interested in them. Uh, we'll bring many, I think if you thought that reptiles weren't interesting, you will certainly find that they are uh, after having Patrick with you. Patrick will be returning to the Galapagos and I can't think of a, a better host for that October departure than Patrick. And that will be October 16th to the 26th of 2023. So it's a trip that I encourage you to consider if you haven't gone or if you'd like to return to the Galapagos, especially on a smaller vessel. The next trip I want to talk to you about is the Portuguese coastal Camino. And this trip's perhaps a little bit different than many other trips that you've seen in, the, in that we call it an active trip. And that's because you can actually walk on the um, Camino Trail, or shall I say, one of the Camino Trails. I'll tell you a little bit more about this in a moment. This trip is in September, a very pleasant time to be in Portugal and Spain, because this trip in fact includes both countries, September 6th to the 18th, 23. And this trip, in fact, we just had a departure uh, return recently, another alumni tour. If you've heard of the Camino of Santiago, essentially it is a, a pilgrimage walk to up here in the northwest corner of uh, Spain in the Galicia region, Santiago de Compostela, uh, where, where once upon a time there was a shrine to St. James, which was uh, created there, and where now stands a cathedral of St. James. And for over a thousand years, this site has been a, a pilgrimage site, and many roads have led to <laughs> Santiago de Compostela. As you can see, this is a map of different pilgrimage routes one could take to get there. Now, the, the most popular one, perhaps the most visited, is the red thick line here in the north of Spain, um, Camino de Santiago. Uh, on this trip, however, we're gonna be taking the less the road less traveled, which is the Portuguese coastal Camino. It's the Camino that starts in Portugal to the south of Santiago de Compostela and runs up the coast and then goes into Spain. And so we, in fact, begin this trip in Porto here, the home of Port Wines, and walk up the, the coast and into the countryside to end at Santiago de Compostela. And um, this, these roads, as I said, they've been, they've been visited for, for centuries. And so there is already really an established network there that we'll be following. The um, motif of the, <laughs> of the walk is the scallop. And you can look into this if you're interested in finding out more. I can't say that I've understood fully the, the, the legitimacy of the stories behind the scallop, but the scallop points the way towards Santiago. And um, it's, you may think that, uh, that you may not be, this is, you may, you may be interested really in the walking nature of this trip. This trip is a trip over several days broken into segments. The segments vary roughly from 15 to 20 kilometers in length and we have sort of a designated start and end point and you can walk. You can walk alone or with uh, you know most of the group or part of the group. Uh, eventually we'll get to the next place in time. This is what we call however a supported walk which means that even if you don't if you don't wish to or you're feeling tired perhaps to complete that 15 or, or 20 kilometers in a day you can simply call up assistance 
and you will be picked up and brought to the next to the next uh, night's uh, accommodations. So it's it's a supported walk. You don't have to carry you don't have to backpack on this trip and bring all of your things with you. All of our luggage, the heavy heavy luggage, is going in a vehicle from one place to another. It's being transported. So all you have to do is bring your day pack with perhaps your bottle of water and a few other light things you might like to have with you and enjoy the way. And you'll enjoy different scenery. You'll enjoy um, you know, medieval uh, towns. So uh, certainly a, a unique ambiance. We think that's one of the appeals of Portugal and Spain, of course, is that history. Um, you'll also be going through, through wilder uh, locations through forests as well on well-marked trails. So you'll get a variety of different landscapes. Of course, ultimately your goal is to get to the city of Santiago de Compostela where the cathedral here, uh, St. James is found. So uh, it's a very interesting, very interesting um, walk. This is a, a closer view here of the route starting in Porto. We, in fact, we start with a, a city tour of Porto. Uh, you have some time on your own as well to enjoy the city and its sites. I check it out and then we start moving up along the the west coast of portugal and then into spain ending ending at santiago de compostela so a really interesting site you have the history the scenery um the culinary experience as well portugal and spain well reputed for their uh, dining and of course the wine so um it's a great trip we'll be happy to tell you more if you're interested um, so some of the features we might say it's a bucket list experience it's active it's outdoors and the the locations we're staying at the 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 lodges are quaint inns so they fit in very well with their locations these are not large commercial establishments they're nice small quaint locations the food and wine once again is wonderful and it's a great way to set your goals and even if you're if you don't feel a feel um totally ready physically to undertake the walk today we will be sharing tips with you on how to train yourself ahead of the walk so you can be fully prepared for the walk once uh, September 2023 comes along. So that's the Camino de Santiago, the Portuguese coastal Camino. And the last trip I want to talk to you about today, presented to you, is Bhutan. Is this the last Shangri-La in Oct from October 31st to November 10th of 2023. Uh, this is a trip we might say is a, is a indeed a very remote location off the beaten path. Bhutan having perhaps um, uh, moderated the influence of uh, outside culture on its, on its people in a very effective way. Uh, you may be aware, you might have heard of the, the GNP instead of GDP being a measure of national health, gross national um, uh, happiness, GNH, I should say, uh, gross national happiness. And it's a fantastic, very small country located in the Himalaya between um, basically Nepal, Tibet, and India. And this trip is an opportunity to discover um, what we might call some of the, the iconic places of, of Bhutan, some of the places you've certainly seen in photographs, as well as discover the the unique culture, a culture heavily influenced by Buddhism, and the, the gentle ways that Bhutan has um, you know, transitioned to modernity, if you will. And so it's a trip uh, with a, a contemplative side to it as well, a chance for us to connect not only with the place itself, but also to reflect on our own place in the world. Um, spirituality does play a, a very important part. So I, I, I would say that we are so you're certainly going to visit a number of religious sites um, like monasteries where uh, monks and nuns live and practice and worship uh, it's a chance to to gain insight into their way of thinking and um, it's a visually very appealing uh, location as well uh, this tiger's nest is one of the places we will visit maybe the most iconic site in bhutan uh, a monastery that was built um, in, in various stages, I think the, the most recent stage in the early 17th century, uh, when apparently Bhutan was at war with Tibet, if you can imagine, two Buddhist kingdoms at war with each other. Um, it's a chance for us to gain some insights onto the connection of Bhutan as well with its neighbors. And uh, it's simply a beautiful place. The art, the, the, the architecture is beautiful. Um, the, the locations are beautiful and our accommodations as well. Some of them are somewhat more modern and some of them are uh, more 
more local in feel. So you'll get a, a sense of um, you know being in the place, being you know, part of the place when you're there. It's a relatively uh, easygoing trip as far as physical requirements are concerned. And we like to say that on all of our alumni trips, you'll have a great insights into the destination. Um, one of uh, this, the tours, uh, one of the bonus features of this trip, we think, is the study leader, Paula Swart, who is a, a curator of um, all things East Asian. Paula is a, an author and um, a real student of East Asian culture. She speaks uh, Mandarin, uh, various other languages as well, and has been a popular tour, uh, tour leader for our alumni tours to East Asia, China, um, Vietnam, Cambodia, and uh, as well as uh, Thailand, Japan, uh, and uh, Uzbekistan, in fact, as well as Central Asia. So Paula is bringing a lot of insight into East Asia to uh, Buddhist culture as well on the strip. And you will enjoy meeting her and traveling with her. And once again, it's a place you, uh, perhaps one of the most remote places you'll ever be a chance to discover a gross national happiness. Uh, we think all of our travelers who go to Bhutan return uh, from this, um, you know, different people. Uh, it is not a difficult trip physically, but there is some opportunity for walking and hiking if you like. And it's a chance to step into a place which is very much alive. Um, a lot of the, the surroundings, the buildings, architecture look um, look like they come from a, another time, which they do, but they're, but these buildings, the, the countries, the, the culture is very much alive and modern uh, to the extent and in the way that it chooses to be, which is what I think you'll find very interesting. So um, our trips feature a chance to um, connect with small groups of other travelers. As I said, our, our trips are drawing on the Canadian University alumni community. So you're generally traveling with other Canadians and it, they're, they're fun, educational, fun yet educational. And um, we think this, uh, this selection of tours offers you different ways to explore, whether you like to cruise, you like to be more active, uh, maybe perhaps less so if you want to stay closer to home and discover a corner of our country like the Magdalene Islands or go farther further afield to a place like Bhutan. Um, we encourage you, if you're interested in any of these trips, to refer to your University Alumni Association to find out uh, more. Uh, if you like, we will um, also avail some of the information um, following this presentation. I would like to turn to some questions that you have, and I know there are a number of questions in the question tab here, and I'm gonna have a look at those and answer you. I know that I have one question here from um, oh, Joanne is asking about Magdalen Islands, and specifically, do we know the extent of the changed landscapes and damage since Fiona? Um, Joanne, that's an excellent question. Uh, we, we don't know the extent of, um, of the damage since that. That will obviously be top of mind. Um, uh, it is top of mind right now, of course, uh, in the news. We have not heard back from our friends in the Magdalene Islands right now. So we are assuming that, uh, of course, all the infrastructure and everything is in place and in, in good um, working order for a visit in June. But uh, that's a great question, Joanne. Thank you for your concern. Bhutan. I have a question from Peggy about Bhutan. Uh, do we have the single supplement option? And I would say we do generally have that option for all of our trips. Uh, we have that information inside the exact uh, cost of that single supplement in our detailed itinerary. But yes, the single supplement is available if you would like guaranteed single accommodations, if I understand your question correctly. If you are a single traveler, at the same time, I'll answer this question. If you are a single traveler who is looking to share uh, a room, that option is available. We do have a what we call request share program. So um, if you sign up, especially if you sign up early as a single, we will try to match you up with, uh, with a fellow single uh, same-sex traveler. And um, that might be a way to, to make a trip um, go for you. I have a question from Gloria. I am not seeing she's Gloria referring to um, one of the locations. I have having a 
challenging time seeing the full question here, excuse me. As I look at that, I'm gonna to have to come back to that, Gloria. Debbie is asking about the Portuguese coastal Camino. Is the Portuguese coastal walk mainly flat? Is the pathway paved? And I'm unfortunately not seeing the, the remainder of your question. I would say it's a ver the the Camino is uh, the surface is varied. Some parts are flat. Some of them are are steeper. Um, partly it is paved, and partly it is uh, graded um, uh, graded gravel. So it's a it's a mixture of um, it's a mixture of surfaces. So we can give you a little bit more information on the actual uh, the actual legs of the trip if you like uh, debbie we can uh, provide that information to you so you can judge the difficulty and one of my colleagues here um, who has uh, walked the camino can also uh, be informative i'm afraid i don't see the, the last part of your question for some reason let me see if i can fix that and i cannot at the moment but oh here we go i'm sorry do we walk during daytime i do see it now thank you debbie yes the answer is we do walk during daytime we do not walk at night so you'll be walking during the daytime after from after breakfast till as late as dinner depending if you do the full walk for that day or not or if you choose to call in um, for a uh, vehicle transport for the for the, uh, the latter part uh, but yes we walk exclusively during daytime the intent is to return to the to get the next place for dinner so that's your uh, that's the answer uh, grace is asking about the cost of the portugal trip and I will back up quickly there because it's just escaping me at the very moment, Grace. And let me go back to that slide with that information. And I think we had it right, sorry. Right, no, it's not there, I'm sorry. Well, let me go back a little bit. We can also provide that, but I know you want it to know right now. Let me, there we go, sorry. Approximately US uh, 6945. Grace. Debbie is asking how big are the groups? Of course, group size varies depending on the destination. I would say um, generally our groups are ranging from 10 to 18 travelers, depending on the nature of the location. So um, Magdalen Islands, perhaps, for example, we, we may have from 12 to 16 travelers joining our groups. Uh, in the Galapagos, typically maximum 16 for Camino, a little bit higher because of the nature of the trip itself so but generally we're under 20 travelers for for all of our trips unless it's a full ship larger charter like antarctica tony is just commenting that the hike to tiger's nest is not easy thank you tony for that i suppose that that requires us uh, to consider a little bit um, about our, our uh, fitness ahead of time to train up uh, estelle is asking are there any trips with no single supplement charge um, of these trips, I would say all of these trips have a, an applicable single supplement. Um, if you, yeah, certainly if you like a guaranteed single um, room, there would be a single supplement. As I said, if you are looking to perhaps avoid a single supplement and you are willing to share, uh, if you book early, we can match you up with someone else. But yes, generally Estelle, that there is a single supplement applicable. Gloria is asking if we're taking any bookings right now for the October trip to the Galapagos. We are. We, we've just uh, literally yesterday opened up the departure. So we will take uh, bookings for that departure, October 16th to 26th. There is a single supplement if you would like a guaranteed single accommodations on board this departure. The single supplement for the cabin would be 50% if you would like guaranteed single accommodations. And there's a limited number of single accommodations on that vessel because there's, there are only eight cabins. So Gloria will be happy to tell you more if you'd like. Um, Kelty is asking, are these the only trips offered by our company Worldwide Quest or are there other trips? We offer a, a large selection of different uh, tours in different branches of our company. We have Quest Nature Tours, we have Alumni Expeditions, 
um, uh, literary tours, and we also are the um, sole provider, exclusive provider of, of, of alumni travel to uh, the University of British Columbia, UBC Travel Club. So uh, if you want to find out a little bit more, if you go to worldwidequest.com, you'll see a fuller range of the different tours that we offer. Mary is asking, is there a premium to pay for the experts on each trip? I would say, um, no, we cost our trips, uh, we think very effectively, they're very high value in terms of the experts we have. And so there's no par particular um, premium above, above and beyond what you might expect, I think. Um, so we think it's a great value to have people like Paula Swart, uh, Dan Riskin, Patrick Muldolan, and, and other uh, leaders. So. Janet is asking, oh, great question. I joined late. Will we have access to a recording of the session? And the answer is yes. We will send you the link to the recording so you can view this in its entirety. Or if you'd like to share it with anyone else, you can also do that, Mary. Mary is asking a question, uh, are costs in US or Canadian? That will depend on the destination. For Canadian trips, our trips are Canadian dollars. Um, for, for the other, uh, Overseas trips that I've discussed here, those are all priced in US dollars, but the, the pricing currency will depend on the destination. In this case, it just happens to be that those others are in US dollars. Eric is asking, do prices include the flight? Uh, for most of our trips, the answer is no, and that's because travelers are coming from all different parts of Canada. So it's not really effective to to offer to include a trip price because it's just not uniform or really fair. Uh, for some trips, however, the Galapagos expedition, we are including in our cost the flight from mainland Ecuador to the Galapagos Islands. Um, you, you do have to fly to the Galapagos from the mainland. And so we're including that with you and we'll all be flying together. We'll meet in Quito, we'll fly together to the Galapagos and, and we'll return back by plane. Um, uh, Renee is asking, is there a minimum age for these trips? We have an 11-year-old son. I will say generally, Renee, that we restrict our traveler, our, our, um, our, our minimum age of 16 years of age. There are very rare instances where we will accommodate a, uh, a person younger than that due to a, a, a keen and profound interest in the subject matter and the destination. I'll be happy to discuss that further with you, Renee. Um, it's a rare but uh, excellent question. And I'll just see if I have any other questions here. Yes, I think Gloria was referring. Oh, yes, Gloria was Gloria was just commenting that Bhutan is an amazing place that she, that she was there four years ago. And are we going to the Black Neck uh, Swan Festival? I think you might mean Crane Crane Festival. Um, we are. I think we're not going to that. I believe that takes place in the winter time. So we're not planning on going to that one, that event specifically. And I think that I've answered all the questions that I see here in front of me. Um, I do have another comment from Estelle. I think Estelle, uh, oh yes, Gloria, you're commenting on the Crane Festival, uh, which is in November. I do not believe we're going to that event, however. Uh, Estelle is commenting, I think Estelle, you've traveled with us before. Um, that uh, we have many trips and there's certain trips that are that are solely for university or, or, or your question is are there certain trips that are solely for university alumni and friends we the trips that i've discussed today are being um, promoted to canadian university alumni and friends uh, we will welcome others uh, aboard or, or along with their trips if they're interested so if you have friends who may not be an alumnus i mean if, if you're friends with them as we say alumni and friends they're welcome to join along and um and I uh, just had a comment from Nita. Thank you so much, Nita, for your, your kind comment. Uh, as I said to everyone, we will have, we will avail the recording to this, um, to this presentation to you following this. I thank you for your questions. And if there are any questions that you have, um, you'll be able to connect with us. Oh, Angela's asking one, one question. How do we register online or by phone? Um, you can send us an email at travel at worldwidequest.com. And you can also call us at 1-800-387-1483. That's 800-387-1483. And, uh, whoops. 
so um, you can do that. So, but travel at worldwidequest.com is um, perhaps the easier way to connect with us. So thank you very much, everybody. We'll look forward to um, being in touch with you and to welcoming you on one of these alumni trips. Thank you.